coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. The bowling alley killer is still at large. Police warn he may strike again. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every week we choose a popular saying and we take an admittedly shallow, we're aware, hopefully comedic, once in a while interesting, if we're really lucky, like roll the dice lucky, educational, <laughs> dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but we also use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. You are nailing that more and more as the weeks go on here. What about last week? Well, as the, that's, uh, this week was better. Okay, so as the weeks go on, it's getting better. So by our by last by our sixth year, no, I'm saying that this week was better than last week. Thanks. As the weeks go on, it's getting better. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. Thanks. Got it. You, <laughs> you think this? I, you think this would be like <laughs> the one line I could do in my sleep? Sure. <laughs> Apparently, speaking in public is not my forte. It's not my main interest. It's not. I, I like it when you, you talk French like that. French. What, oh, Forte? Yeah, I know. It just it's, does something for me. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's a good thing, bad. Forte, just say it again. Forte. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's languages. You just have a way with them. I do? Yeah, it's just like you're natural. Uh, you're like a linguist. Like You're just natural. Like no. You could, like a little bit of Spanish right now. It's just like a little bit Bonjour. of Bonjour. Yeah, it's close. Taco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just something that's like right in your lane. Is, is yeah, langu- is I'm, la- I'm picking up what you're throwing down. <laughs> it's languages. It's performance. I think that's up my alley, guys. Is that what you're trying to say? It's something that's up my alley? Right, right, or, right, right. oh man, I had, I had a better one. I meant I chose the wrong one because I couldn't miss this opportunity to play this little clip right here. Sure. It's right up your alley. John Hammond. Nice. Jurassic Park. Up your alley. Up my alley. Hello. Up your alley. (laughs) Up your alley. (laughs) Didn't mean that that to sound like a threat. It's aggressive the way you said it. (laughs) Up your alley. Up your alley. Not up my alley. Up your alley. (laughs) Uh, That is today's idiom, which means uh, I was looking up, like I know how I use it, but I was trying to find an actual definition of how this word or this phrase is used. And it was, it it varies a little bit because it can mean... um, just something you're really interested in, or it can mean something you're really good at. So, like, I'm interested in dinosaurs. I don't. I'm not that knowledgeable. But if dinosaur related things comes up, people are usually, oh, that's right up your alley. Yeah, because it's it's your thing. I can't remember who I was. So talking It doesn't with. have to be a skill. <clears throat> I was talking with somebody just this week about. Uh, oh, they're asking about uh, uh, summer job things. I said I actually think that the uh, place where uh, your son manages it might be might be hiring and to send to send a, a message into him and uh, what's his name oh, I, he's been on before so he didn't care and his name's Trice I said it's short for Triceratops and they're like what I said yeah he's got three kids and they're all named after dinosaurs <laughs> they're like no way I'm like yeah I went through the ball and yeah he's, dinosaurs dinosaurs are up your alley it's up my alley yeah but I'm not a paleontologist no. So it's, it's but you play one on TV, <laughs> but I play one on TV. But that's what I mean by this phrase. It's up your alley. It has some wiggle room for its meaning hmm. because it also could be uh, something you know you're really educated educated on. But it's not your thing. You're just very educated. Oh, it's right up your alley, actually, because blah blah blah. When I think alley, my mind immediately goes to bowling because uh, I bowled as a kid. Yeah, it was one of those. Uh, one of uh, I think it was stepdad's was was like. Hardcore bowler, and so the family bowled. And so all I think alley, I'm thinking bowling. That's funny. Yeah, and then I was saying, oh, bowling. And then it's like, oh, we have a bowling alley in Surrey. It's not like super popular because it's in kind of a real sketchy area. The Dell. The Dell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, that's not where the farmer is. No. He's not in the Dell because it's scary there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so it's like, my mind is going, oh, the, the Dell. But it's in such a sketchy, like, uh, like safe injection sitey kind of area <laughs> of Surrey. <true. laughs> yeah, true. it is. And so I thought, better than the Dell, it should be called Pins and Needles. Wow. Because <laughs> that would describe it way better. That's amazing. Yeah. The, I know we did a Pins and Needles episode a Spe- few back. But. Speaking of missed opportunities for the naming of a bowling alley, I was in West Edmonton Mall last week. 
Oh, and, okay. And so we're just doing a walkthrough. We had some time to kill, doing a walk around. And you know, imagine any mall, every store, and kind of the the width of any given retail sure. store in a mall. Sure. Between two of those stores, randomly, a, there was a door, and typically it would say like. Um, Employees only, or bathrooms mm-hmm. this way, or something like this. That kind of long hallway. Yep. Didn't have a door, sorry, just a hallway. But it was the only way to get to a bowling alley, was through this little That's... alley, and it was called like Burt's Bowling. And I'm like, <laughs> why? You got to use the word alley if you got to enter through right. an alley to get to the bowling alleys. It sounds like one of those things where you could have a pop machine on the outside as the secret entrance. <laughs> yes, that was that width. It was just like weird. There's almost no signage. You got to know where you're going. I got to I got to see one once in where were we? I was with Dave McDonald. I don't know if we were in Chicago, and it was the it was a shoe store behind a pop machine door. Oh, really? Yeah. And we were trying to take pictures from the outside, and they weren't having it. They're like, "You stop!" Like angrily stopping us because it's meant to be secret. Yeah. So it has a full storefront that's a convenience store, and a pop machine um, like is part of the convenience store. So and is so there you, a convenience store? Yes. So there's a convenience store. It's it's uh, I want to say it's eight feet deep and the width of width of a convenience store that sells things with a person manning it. Wow. And the secret entrance to like a real sleek, cool, all just all shoes. Like high end? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. So they want to be. Yeah, it's not like pay less shoes or something. But it's like <laughs> it's like this like you got to go to the shoe store. This has got a secret entrance. I wonder if that works for them or works against them. I don't know well, we're talking about it. So yeah, I guess. Yeah. Huh. That's, that's really like, cool. Yeah. Well, it was, it was particularly that's an neat. exit room move. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So yes, this type of thing, pins and needles. Pin, the Dell. Yeah. That's pretty great. Actually. <laughs> that sums it up. Yeah. That's actually really funny. Yeah. It's the, it's like totally attached to like a CD bar and do, do you, okay. Where you live, I'm trying to picture it for a second. You don't have a back alley. Do you? No. Um, some of the houses do, but but not, did, that used to be a thing, like you for garbage collection and parking. Yeah, your garage and I mean, when I grew up, and this is in East Vancouver, everybody had a back alley. Like that's where we were skateboarding because there was less traffic, and that's where you were. That was the getting name into trouble. Our theater sports place, the back alley theater. Back alley theater. Now that was my next question is because it goes both ways with bowling. Is it an alley or a lane? Hmm. And is there a difference? Is there an actual difference, or is it just like ah, depends on the? That's a that's a that's an interesting semantic. It's a lane. It's a bowling lane. What bowling makes an alley. alley an alley? There's got to be more than one. It's a plural of lane. Because I think penny lane is lane, just a road. Lane, alleys. <laughs> I don't know. Man. I'm just <laughs> some random some random tidbit. Okay, like, so we basically, always called alley no, or the lane is does the it one forward, in does the it back. face north and south or east and west. No, is it that kind of thing? I don't, I'm just still oh, making man. stuff up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we always referred to alley as the back, like the lane. The back, but maybe you need to have because there's Did some. You just say we always referred to the alley as the thing in the back, the lane. So you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying alley. to I'm trying to work <laughs> through out loud. Is it a lane or alley because it's in the back? But if you think of like the gum wall at Pike Place or uh, Pike Market, what's yeah. it called? Pike Place? Yeah. That's the, that's that the would be an thing. alley. Yeah. But is that the back or is that just another little walk through? I guess that's the back of two sides of buildings. Hmm. I would say there's a storefront and then not that. The opposite side of that would be the back. So alley. you can't have your storefront facing an alley because that'd be the store back. It'd be the storefront. Yeah. I don't know. That, it's got to be the back or it's not the back. Otherwise, it's not an alley. It, Does an alley have to be between two things? Is that why alley. the word valley sounds like alley? <laughs> it's, it's the V. It's the center of... That's where the alley is down the center of the V. Right. You got a front and a back. Because you can say bowling alley or bowling lane. Right. Who's on first? <laughs> but if you're in traffic, yeah, you stay in your lane, not in your alley. Stay in your alley. Well, it depends, I guess. What if your traffic is the back of a property? Then it's, everyone's in the alley. <laughs> you say, stay in your alley. I'm trying to pass you in your alley. Is it Kirsty Lane? <laughs> no, it's Kirsty Alley. It's Kirsty Alley. Very it's, much so. Because <laughs> of the back. Right, on the front, it's very different. It's valley. Yeah. <laughs> Which could be weirder than I meant it. But it doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, can you think of a famous alley? Not like a road. But- alley Sheedy. 
wow, I could not come up with one because I wanted one for Riddlink. Oh. And I'm like, there, there's Breakfast Club. Doesn't exist. Couldn't find one. Look at that. Like two seconds. <laughs> Ali Sheedy. There you go. Yep, Ali Sheedy. That's that's it. She's the one who makes it snow. Yeah, with her dandruff. With her dandruff. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And then what they did. She was in St. Elmo's Fire as well, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was in that sort of brat. Genre of things. The, she orbited around the brat pack. Yeah. Molly Ringwald. Were any of the outsiders also in the Breakfast Club? Emilio Estevez. Yes. He wins. <laughs> He's got it all covered. He's got all the genres. Who else was in the Mighty Ducks? Emilio <laughs> Estevez. <laughs> Think about that. I love how the torture for like a criminal offense back in the day was like you need to watching go... an Emilio Estevez movie. <laughs> no, you had to go coach like Little League or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like your community you've, service. <laughs> you've you've slighted society wrong. Your payment is to watch children. <laughs> You need to be a coach. Nobody, what? No, not that. But not only that. Inhumane. But if you're a criminal, and what we're going to do with you, put you around children. <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> None of it makes sense. I guess maybe if they're white collar kind of crimes. Yeah. But yeah, you don't want some. Is that how he ended up coaching? I don't even know if I've seen that movie. I'm just thinking of like Bad News Bears, Mighty Ducks. It's um, all the same thing. Yeah, it's the same kind of movie where, yeah, you were you did something wrong and you were... You had to do community service. I, I think there's a similar, I mean, this is really out of the box, but there was a Kenny Rogers movie called... Roaster's Chickens. No. That was delicious. The Gambler. Anyway, it was kind of a bad news bear situation. With where, Kenny Rogers. Where he had a bunch of kids. He was a race car driver. It wasn't baseball. Hmm. But all of a sudden, he had a bunch of kids helping him around the track. And I think it was a similar kind of thing, too. Like, yeah, you're stuck with these kids then. That's what? funny. Okay, so this that, is my pit crew. Uh, I had a funny one this week, and it, it's not a, particularly about anything, but it just it, it cracks me up. So I'll tell you. Okay, uh, we're doing this feeding program down near Pins and Needles. Yes, and uh, helping the <laughs> yeah our street friends, street entrenched. Yes, the street entrenched, and uh, there's a, a gentleman there who plays music on nights nice. that, that were there yeah and so to kind of keep the mood light and uh, kind of have some fun entertainment it's really a, it's it's really a nice addition right so he uh older dude so he takes like old songs yeah and then like christianifies them okay uh to like so he was doing like peaceful easy feeling which is not like a new song like but the eagles like yep peaceful easy feeling and uh you know so i know he won't let me down you know talk about jesus and all yep. this sort of thing and so I was with somebody, and they're like, I'm like, oh, man, it's like the Eagles, like, you recognize this song? He's like, no, I'm like 90s kid, like Nirvana. And I said, well, maybe he'll do Smells Like Night Shift. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a rubby dubby area yeah. <laughs> with an odor. So instead of Smells Like Teen Spirit, Did he Smells do it? Like Night Shift. Anyways, it caught his funny. And in one of those, like, yeah, you can't stop laughing. Sort of ways, yeah. It was a good feeling moment. It smells like night shift. Because, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. I, because I know you're sitting on pins and needles. Mm -hmm. That Kenny Rogers movie is called Six Pack. Okay, there you go. And here's the description of the movie. A race car driver is driving to, the, to a race in a motorhome with his race car on a trailer. His car gets stripped of parts. He ends up with six orphan kids on his way to the race. <laughs> That's all it says. That, that makes complete sense. <laughs> One minute you're hijacked, uh, all your parts, and next thing you know, stolen. you got six orphans yeah. in your car. It's real life. Huh. Kenny yeah. Rogers. I don't know where these six orphan kids came from, officer. But they're fantastic pit crew. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Yeah. So what would you say is right up your alley? If if one one subject, if a subject comes up, you're like, oh, that's right up my alley. Okay, so I actually have a, a philosophy on this. Is the effort that it takes to go to a hundred percent on something is like so overwhelming, but it takes 10,000 hours. Yeah. But, but if you use a thousand hours, you can get to like 80, 85% of something. Right. And so I would rather do 10 things at B level than one thing at a level. Okay. How about this? Yeah. Let me rephrase the question. It's a trivia night at some restaurant and we're all covering one subject. You're hoping you get what? I understand, I understand the question. You still don't know. I, I, I'm one thing. Put me in any category, and I will get I will get us a B. You'll get 80%. I <laughs> will get us a B. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I, I'd heard that uh, uh, recently someone was uh, uh, finishing their 
they'd accomplished a lot in their field. And the interviewer was asking them, like, you know, like, what's next? Like, what's your next dream thing? Um, you know, that just like you aspire to. And uh, he's like, you know, I've oof, that's hard. I've like really accomplished a lot in this field. And the interviewers <laughs> said to the effect, well, it's like, well, instead of being great at one thing, I've chosen to be mediocre at, at more things. And I'm that's like, what he said. Yeah, that's what the interviewer said. And I'm oh. like that. That's it. Right. Yeah. So I know that it's like be outstanding in your one field. And then there's the jack of all trades. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll dabble in something for long enough to be reasonable at it. And then. It's true. Move, move along. Yeah, I've, and, I've seen you move through several. Yeah. Do you play an instrument? I oh, you play drums. I've farted around on drums. Um, n- like not good. Um, uh, you feel like plucked around on a piano. You and, strike or, me as the type of guy that had you chosen an instrument, you'd be just killer at it because you get laser focused when you're into something. Yeah, it's uh, some people call it OCD. <laughs> I didn't. And it's a it's like it's a fantastic quality to like uh, once it's harnessed. Yeah, so I, I like I go head deep into something for like a year, or yeah, two years maybe, and then that's it. Just and then wash my hands of it. And then do you lose interest in it? No, I it'll come up in conversation and hey, do you do whatever? And the, I used to. I, yes, I've done X Y Z or know enough of the lingo inside of it to the yep. people will know. Oh, he's not just an idiot. Have you ever thought of being a barber, hairdresser? Have you done that one yet? Uh, not to myself, but I've cut hair and I've got my kids to cut my hair and walk them along. There you go. Yeah. How about you? How about you, Barbary interest in haircuts and stuff? Uh, I know one haircut. You cut a, your hair more than anyone I know. I just, every second day I get a haircut. <laughs> yeah, that's true. quite a bit. Somebody, who was I with? I can't remember who I was with. And I said, uh, they said, you look different. I'm like, ah, I got a haircut today. And they start laughing. I'm like, but actually I did. They're like, wait, what? I said, well, I shaved, shaved my head today is all I'm saying. I'm, making, I'm trying to be funny. They're like, did you actually shave your head today? I'm like, yeah, like I'm... I'm bald. staring at you with a bald Freshly head. Freshly shorn. And they're like, you shave your head? I'm like, do you think I'm... <laughs> like, I can understand you... Chemo that you're going through or something? <laughs> I can understand if I had the cul-de-sac and I'm balding. Right. But you think I'm like this naturally. billiard ball headed naturally. I don't, I don't know. I just... I never thought about the fact that you got to maintain it. I'm like, yeah, I got to shave my whole head every two days. You got to grow it out enough and then like wax it. But I've also, I've probably said this on ne- this website. Neat. If I don't shave my head if or if I let it grow out a little bit, yeah. because my hair is so blonde, it doesn't look like it's growing in. I just look out of focus. <laughs> it's see, like I'm I see, blurry. I see people rubbing their eyes. <laughs> like, he looks blurry. He looks pixelated. <laughs> He's like 8-bit version of what he could be. <laughs> okay, I did hear this little gem, and then we should head into some uh, origins. Okay, okay. what do you got? Okay, um, the bowling alley killer is still at large. Police warn he may strike again. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Let's get into some uh, origins. All right, I was, I was, there's got to be a follow-up joke using spare. Okay. I said some words. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from. All right. Well, you know, I don't want to get you too excited, but we might need more time to get into this one. Oh, wow. Uh, 20th century, American, British English. That's where this comes from. Wow. Really? Probably didn't know that, did you? No, I did not. Um, According to the American Heritage Dictionary of Idioms, using the term alley to refer to one's own province, which I thought was an interesting choice of word, goes all the way back to the 1600s. And there's no definition on how they're using the word province here. Do you think it means just area? Like that's your area Mm -hmm. of expertise or that is your physical area? Because I think you could say, oh, that's right up your alley with regards to uh, where you live too. Like, oh, that's out your way. Oh, that's up your alley. That's your province. Yeah. So I think province is just your area, whether it's your area of expertise or your area physically. As far as the exact phrase, according to the OED, uh, the phrase to be up one's alley was documented as early as 1931. M.E. Gilman, Saab sister, verse 65 says, it's about, <laughs> it's about time a good murder broke, and this one is right up your alley. Mm. So mm-hmm. completely out of context, but that is in print in 1931. The Oxford English Dictionary also notes that to be up one's alley has been in use, in use as slang since the turn of the 20th century. 
So it's even older than the print version of that and would have been made quite common by the 30s or when it's in, uh, in print. Uh, and then they just said um, that uh, one's cup of tea has a very similar meaning. Hmm. So it's your cup of tea, which I don't really feel like, like that's your cup of tea means. That's how you take tea. <laughs> right. But that's Two your sugar, one cream. That's your cup of tea. Like, that's your that's interest, you, not your area. That's how you do tea. I don't do tea. Mm. I'm Ooh. not Mr. T. Oolong. Love you oolong time. I don't, I don't do tea. No tea. Why? I say no to tea. What's wrong with tea? You don't do coffee I, either. I don't do coffee or tea, but only, uh, and this is the truth, the only reason I don't do either one is they're Mormon. gross. They're okay. gross. Oh, yeah. 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 No. The, tea is not gross? No. Yeah, I mean, yes. Wait, how do I answer that? <laughs> Tea's not gross? Yes, it is. <laughs> tea is gross. I, find I know you don't like iced tea. I don't. That's still tea. It's just cold. I understand. Uh, but If you like, warm it up, it's still gross. <laughs> tea, is, there's just so many varieties. Like orange blossom. Okay, fair enough. If, uh, so there's black tea leaf. and then there's like floral tea. Yeah. I can, I can tolerate floral tea. Like if I've got a sore throat or something, I'll... I'll get a a sweeter tea and I'll I'll bear through it, but I would never choose a tea on purpose. Interesting. So you don't have a particular way that you like your tea, except uh, not at all. Not at all is is great. That's how you prefer your tea. Yeah, <laughs> and not it drinking it in someone else's cup <laughs> with them drinking it. So people are really particular about like I don't have cream. I put milk in my, and then there's a process of like you putting uh, the hot tea in and like swirling to warm your cup um yep some people do condiments first so, so that when they put the hot tea in it pre-mixes i am disappointed in myself for yeah not liking Fair enough. either one of these things oh yeah, yeah yeah because i i enjoy like my son got really into tea for a while see and he and i there's some things there and he he like got these cool special like Drop this in this hot water yes. and, and it, the flower blossoms. Yes. And, and I'm like, what is go-? like the magic and the way so particular. And people are like that with their coffee. Too. You don't like, boil do the way, water. This you bring it to like coffee. You bring it to 91.5. You mix it this, yeah. All those yeah. like cool, mm-hmm. like aficionado kind of dorkiness. The science like, behind. I love that. I just don't want to taste it. Interesting. Yeah. And like, I'm not a picky eater. Well, I, could, I enjoy everything. Allegedly. But not coffee and tea. Well. It could be not that you would have to uh, like force yourself into one of these things, but finding a concoction of things that you did like, so you could at least be sociable. Wow, the, the tea's out, and you're like, I like you like sweet, so maybe you could two sugar some tea. Why am I unsociable if I don't drink the same if drink is, as you? If tea is coming out, and you're like, no, well, not, I wouldn't say it like that. You just mm, no. That's not happening today. That's how you'd say it. I usually say it's against my religion. <laughs> Nobody questions that. No, I just go say, oh, bit. I'm good. Uh, maybe something cold. Do you have water? Well, I, yeah. I always make it like, uh, I would well, ra- rather something with cold. like tea in it. It's called iced tea. <laughs> maybe you'd like some. I know you don't drink iced tea. You don't drink coffee. No. But it's, it's also you... unlike you to dig in so fervently on something. It's that bad. Maybe you had a bad childhood experience. I My whole childhood. <laughs> <laughs> was there thank some for, sort of, thank you were laughing at was that. there some sort of like orange pico red rose <laughs> incident red rose so specific i don't know like tetley what happened like yeah i don't know i don't know but it's gross you were forced to as a child I, have, and yeah. now you don't like it i i i came back with a box of swiss chocolates mm-hmm. and the first chocolate i grabbed was a mocha or whatever ch- coffee flavored Espresso. I was just like, oh, like a, like a whole box of chocolates. I guess Forrest Gump was right. <laughs> Life is like. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. And I got True. coffee. Uh, so my mother-in-law, this is nasty, uh, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a fantastic. So the chocolates and her not wanting to goof up the display, stick her thumb into the bottom of it. What do you mean? Like put her thumb into the bottom of a chocolate. To, to see what it is? To see if it, and if it's a flavor she didn't like, she would put it back. That's hilarious. Isn't that amazing? Into the bottom. Boop. Why doesn't she just read the menu thing? I don't know. That's a good question. Not to ask her, I guess. Hmm. Her juice is to thumb. Everyone Jonathan's else just like... picks it up and pops in the mouth, not even noticing probably the There's thumb. There's a thumb hole in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
That's, it's just a fascinating way of solving a problem. That's great. I love it. Okay, so your your childhood and tea, you don't know where it went wrong? No. Does anybody know why they dislike a food or drink or... No, but I, I can think of you know what? multiple I don't, things I've disliked, and then I just kind of work my I, way through I, My the, brother-in-law is not a fan of chocolate. And I'm like, I get it. To me, coffee and chocolate are, are sisters. and But I love chocolate, so I don't know why, one and not the other. But, but yeah, he's like, oh, he doesn't like coffee either, though, but... Um, so interesting. Yeah. So like why somebody likes something, dislikes something else. But I can think of like, uh, like Brussels sprouts. Love them. Okay. So I used to detest them. And then I just kept, I'm going to have a couple for Thanksgiving. I'm going to have a couple at Christmas time. I'm going to have a couple. Now I like them. Right. Olives. Some people don't like them. Just have a couple. Love them. Whew. And then finally you're like, these are delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So I should drink more coffee. You should try tea. You probably, I will say this, you've probably saved yourself, well, you would, you would spend it on Diet Coke. Yeah. But you would have saved yourself a ton of money by not getting into coffee culture. Right. Having to go like get a mocha or something. You, right, right, right. Probably tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So no, you you may have know. spent on Diet Coke, but probably not coffee. So there you go. Anyway. Your cheap coffee date. I will say that. Yeah. I, I like the smell of both. Mm. Like... Smell of coffee in the morning? That's the best. Smells like night shift. <laughs> That's uh, to you. All right, listen. Riddle Lake is a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question. It requires a two-part overlapping answer. Overlapping by word, syllable, word, or word. What did I say? I said everything twice there. Uh, for example, last week, uh, you, you didn't seem to get this one. You've had a week to think about it. Okay. Slang for being armed, which was last week's idiom. Mm-hmm. In this 2010 Julia Roberts movie of a traveling woman trying all sorts of food and spirituality. Man, I'm, I got nothing for you. Just dead air here. Well, it's packing heat, pray, love. Eat, pray, love. I could not pull that out for some reason. Yeah, I thought maybe you had a week to eat, think pray, about it. love. Packing heat is not the answer. Eat, pray, love is not the answer. You play Riddling by saying, packing heat, pray, love. We and... watched Eat, Pray, Love at a staff meeting. I know. I don't know why. He just, like, I want you guys all to watch this. That sounds odd. That yeah, sounds really maybe odd. it was a... Uh, a dream? A Mrs. suggestion. Oh, okay. That would make sense. Then. Yeah. Okay. Jane Austen. Here we go. Well, I've got two uh, Riddlings prepared for you today. I've got two more. Well, hopefully uh, we don't have the same ones. We probably do. Okay. Did you use Kirstie Alley twice? Here yeah. we go. That's especially suited to your taste in feral felines. That's especially suited to your taste in feral felines. I, I had this one, didn't use it because I couldn't think of how to describe it. So I'm gonna I got I know it. It's up my alley cats. Up your alley cats. Yeah. Not That's, mine, but yours. That sounds even worse than <laughs> up your alley. Up your alley cats. Okay. Funny. Okay, you want one? The feral feline part? That, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, That's couldn't, alliteration. I couldn't think <laughs> nice. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. This is something I'm interested in when I lob a ball into the air for the next guy to dunk. Oh, this is something I I'm interested a in. Version of this, I'll Did tell you, you about it. Okay, when I lob a ball into the air for the next guy to dunk, that's right up your alley oop. That's right. Okay, so when I thought alley oop, there's an old song called alley oop. Uh, yeah, how do you know alley oop? Boop, boop, I don't boop, know. I'm like, it's too left field. He'll never get it. Yeah, you didn't think of it using it that way. I, no, I didn't. That's think, funny. But yeah, alley oop definitely came to mind. Okay, uh, this one's a little more fun. Uh, Villegitimate children. This should be uh, right up your alley. The Beastie Boys say you need to do this to party. I th- <laughs> and that's something in your lane. <laughs> the Beastie Boys say you need to do this to party. And that's something oh, in I your lane. It. I got it. I was like, what? That's got to be fight for your right up your alley. That's a <laughs> good one. I yeah. like that one. Yeah. You got to fight <laughs> for your right up your alley. <laughs> Okay, well, I do have one more. Okay. Uh, Why don't you give everybody a way they can play at the home version? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You can order this through Amazon. (laughs) Villagitimate children, we would love to hear from you on Instagram at the.village.idiom or email us at thevillageidiompodcast at gmail.com or whether it's the Facebook, the YouTubes, or the X at three minutes gone. I think this one's uh, simple. The NFL's biggest day could be a strike in this lane. The NFL's biggest day could be a strike in this lane. And that is three minutes gone. Yeah, if they don't get that one. 
Come on. That's easy. Easy peasy. Sometimes it's nice to have the, the low dangly New England ones. Fruits <laughs> of the devil. Well, it was uh, fun putting today's episode uh, I together. I loved it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm Skinny. I'm Jurassic Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. She's right up my alley. She's my last three minutes gone.